Unleavened Bread Ministries presents Panoramic Bible Studies with David Eels. Well, the Lord changed my um, direction here at the, kind of at the last minute and so I want to share something with you that, that I believe he's saying today, something very important. And I'm going to start in uh, Matthew 7 and 1, <clears throat> where Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged. For what, what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. You know, people are creating their own future by judgment and unforgiveness of course most people judge because of unforgiveness and if you're not forgiven you're not you are not forgiven that's true but judgment has to be according to the scriptures and um god if people would just study this it's one of the most important subjects they could possibly study um to, that would get them out of trouble that will keep them under grace and under the mercy of God. Uh, most of the folks out there that love to judge are the least qualified to do that. And their motives are evil. And if we study this, you know, people will realize that the things that are coming upon them are coming out of their own mouth. So... You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And one way that's true is because people tend to judge, especially if they're competitive or if they are seeking a position that's not theirs and God won't give it to them freely, or they're trying to knock down someone else so that they can, uh, in their own eyes, be lifted up. Some people see through that. Some people don't. But Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet. In other words, how you give it out, <clears throat> it shall be measured unto you. And so he's warning, especially the immature, the mature know this, and they're very slow to judge. And they're, if they err, they're going to err on the side of grace, and they're going to err on the side of mercy because they know it's a healthy thing to do, and they fear the Lord. You know, they fear the Lord, um, the Lord's hand against them if they judge wrongly. The Lord, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. He knows who to judge. And of course, He can tell people who are mature how to do that and what to do and what to say. He did it with the prophets, you know. He does it today. And uh, the Bible says, be in readiness to avenge all disobedience when your obedience is made full. Uh, if a person is not obedient in their own life, they better not judge. As the Bible clearly says, if they've got any sin in their life that they're not overcoming, they better not judge. He says, and why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye? but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Now, he said this because it is a habit of people who are blind by their own sins. It's, it's their habit to judge. They are the ones that God uses to crucify many people. But as you know, Jesus was crucified at the hands of people who judged, but they were liars. And they were competitive, and they were jealous, and they had all these selfish ambitions. Um, How wilt thou say to thy brother, let me cast out the mote out of thine eye, and lo, the beam is in thine own eyes? Thou hypocrite, cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Same thing as 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, you know. 
be in readiness to avenge disobedience when your obedience is made full. Most people are very hesitant to judge. In fact, they even try to get God to confirm it very well. They want to know before they do such things because they fear the judgment of God. And, uh, you know, we're this is emphasized again, actually, uh, in Romans chapter uh, 1 and 2. I'm going to start in um, verse 28. I want to say that there are people that are willfully ignorant whenever it comes to anything that comes against what they want. Any idol that they have, they're willfully ignorant of any correction whatsoever. They're willfully ignorant of what the Scripture has to say. They're that way because they have an idol. They have an ambition. And uh, they'll do anything to have that ambition fulfilled, including put God's you know, imprimatur on their, all of their, their actions, you know. They act as though God is in full favor of their ways, but they're just storing up judgment against themselves. Verse 28, Romans 1, 28 says, And even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up unto a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder and strife and deceit and malignity, whispers, backbiters, hateful to God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, both spiritual and physical, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unmerciful, who knowing the ordinance of God that they that practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but consent with them that practice them. So they know that they know what the Scripture says, but their ambitions drive them on. Their lusts drive them on. These are the people right here that we just got through speaking about who are the most likely to do the judging out there. Um, many of them call themselves watchmen. They think that they are. They think God's ordained them, you know, and they're, but they're out there railing and slandering against like like uh, beasts they are um, practicing what God uses them for actually he goes on verse chapter 2 and verse 1 wherefore thou art without excuse O man whosoever thou art that judgest for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest Let's practice the same things. So, um, the people who most often fall into the category, Romans 1, 28 through 32, are the ones that he's correcting here because they're the ones that most often fall into this error. Those who are wise are very slow to judge. They know that only God sees the heart and they can't be judged by outward appearances. And I'll tell you why that's so important in just a few minutes. And we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that practice such things. And reckonest thou this, O man, who judges them that practice such things and doest the same? that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Well, they don't. They don't escape the judgment of God. But in most cases, they've gone too far to reckon that what's happening to them at the moment is from God. And sometimes they don't even know that the judgment of God is upon them because he's judged them in their mind. He's judged them in their ability to discern good and evil. He's judged them 
uh, with a, a, a dull mind, a dull understanding, uh, a, a disrespect for the word. And uh, verse 4 says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and the forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? In other words, remember how patient God was with you, right? Before you get impatient with others, right? You know, if you have any lust or desire to be impatient, you're not qualified. Impatience has to come from God. Judgment has to come from God. If you're leaning in that direction because of an idol or because of selfish ambition, you're not qualified, and when you do it, you will be judged. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up for thyself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So they think because they've gotten away with it now that they'll forever get away with it. They don't understand. God is patient. God is kind. God is merciful. But he's not forgetting because we know what the Scripture says here and he will obey what the Scripture says here. Because you haven't been slapped Today, for judging out of turn, does not mean it won't happen tomorrow. Because he says in verse 6, Who will render to every man according to his works. To them that by patience in well-doing seek for glory and honor. Awesome. Listen to that now. To them that by patience in well-doing Seek for glory and honor and in corruption, eternal life. That is the reward. I'm sad to say many people think they have eternal life, not just by faith, but by manifestation. You see, as long as you have it by faith, you don't have it by manifestation. And uh, God is the one that says, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. But unto them that are factious, and obey not the truth, but obey unrighteousness, shall be wrath and indignation, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that worketh evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there's no respect of persons with God. Well, amen. God is merciful. He's gracious. And uh, he wants us to be the same. We have um, no authority to judge. God has all authority to judge. Who are thou, O man, that judges? And he went on to say that when you judge others, you judge yourself. Man has no authority to judge. God has authority to judge. Because God looketh upon the heart. Man looketh on the outward appearance. I'm going to share with you why that's so important. In Romans 8, we are told, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. How are we in Christ Jesus? We are in Christ Jesus because of our faith. We're accounted righteous because of our faith. Not because of the manifestation, but because of faith. You believe that Jesus took away your sins, past, present, and future. You believe that he delivered you out of the power of Satan, and he delivered you from your sins. And yet you know what those sins are, but you're walking by faith. You're walking by faith that he took that sin away from you. And you're believing that it's done. You're calling the things that be not as though they were. You're obeying Jesus in Mark 11, 24, when he said, All things whatsoever you pray and ask for, believe you received them, and you shall have them. And faith is accounted as righteousness. 
<clears throat> when a person believes God to deliver them from a fault, from a sin, and someone else comes up and condemns them, that person is in for judgment. Because the person who's believing by faith, I'm not talking about mental assent, I'm talking about faith. The person that is believing by faith is accounted righteous because of his faith. And the person who judges them will be judged because they are the one bringing the condemnation to somebody who's in Christ. That's what it says here. Four, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What kind of law is that? Well, when you walk by faith, God does the work in you. It's like a law. It happens. Every time when you walk by faith, God does the work in you. He works in you to will and to do of His good pleasure. So it says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and of death. So there is a law in the Scriptures that when a sinner sins, he dies. And this law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus which is which functions through your faith through repentance and faith sets you free from the law that's written on the page or even the law that's in a man's heart or religion you know religions put lots of laws on people but they that doesn't clean people up at all um the law can't do this. You, If you are walking by faith in Jesus Christ and not accounting uh, your sin because of your actions and, and, and so on and so forth, if you are walking by faith in Jesus Christ, you're free from the law of sin and of death. That's what he tells you. Now maybe we'll look a little bit more at that in a few minutes, but I just wanted to point that out to you because that's extremely important. Number one, what's the difference between the law and grace? Well, I'll point something out to you in Leviticus chapter 5. I want to read this to you, verse 17. If anyone sin and do any of the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done, well, that covers a lot, doesn't it? Do you remember everything that the Lord said in His Word not to be done? Well, no, nobody does. Wow, so you've been held accountable for that? Yes. He says, if any man sin and do any of the things which the Lord hath commanded not to be done, though he knew it not, yet he is guilty and shall bear his iniquity. Wow, the law was tough, wasn't it? Now you know why the law could make no one perfect. And now you know why it's so ignorant for Christians to go back under the law, which God didn't make with them in the first place. Now you know it's so ignorant because you bring judgment upon yourself. People who live under the law First of all, they judge others. They judge them according to the law. They don't judge them according to the spirit of life in Christ Jesus because they don't understand the difference. They judge them according to the law. Then they fall under judgment. And uh, they don't, they rarely understand why this problem is upon them. It's because they're judging according to law, not according to grace. When you judge others that way, you're judged that way. Remember what Jesus said, with what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you. Judge not, lest you be judged, he said. So, it's most people's judgment that falls upon them is coming out of their own mouth against others. This is what God is saying. He's guilty, even if he didn't know it. Oh my goodness, everybody better start reading real fast, right? <laughs> no, that's the difference between grace and law. Again, there's no difference between man's law 
and the law of the old covenant. You're, ju- you're not to be judged by either one. You're not to judge by either one. We have a new covenant. And I know many people haven't figured that out, and they willfully disagree with the scriptures on that. God made the old covenant with the Jews. He did not make it with the Gentiles. He made the new covenant with the church. And in order to be in the church, you have to be justified by faith, not the law. Okay, so the problem with people who are judging by law, they may, they may consider that they're not under the law of Moses, but they're still judging according to law if they're judging according to sight, if they're judging according to outward appearance. And the reason is that when a person is under grace, God is not imputing iniquity to them. I'm going to share that with you in just a minute. Uh, First, I want to read the rest of this. And he shall bring a ram without blemish of the flock according to thy estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make atonement for him according to the thing wherein he erred unwittingly and knew it not, and he shall be forgiven. It is a trespass offering. He is certainly guilty before the Lord. Okay, so you say, well, we've already got our trespass offering. He is Jesus Christ. Well, that's true, but if you're judging according to the law... You don't have that. You're going to be judged according to the law. And uh, if you judge, you'll be judged. The lawgiver, our Moses, our new covenant Moses, has spoken. If you judge others according to the law, you will be judged according to the law. If you judge according to grace, you'll be judged according to grace. If you judge according to the Spirit who knows the man's heart, whether he's walking by faith and covered by the blood or not, or whether the man is in willful disobedience or not. We know that if a man is in willful disobedience, if we sin willfully after we receive a knowledge of the truth, there's the key right there, there remains no sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment. When someone shows you what the Bible says about something and you totally ignore it, well, that's a dangerous thing to do because you see what it says, and yet, because of your self-will or your lust, you continue doing what you want to do. And that person always gets judged, and sometimes they're storing up judgment for themselves because of their sinful ways, right? So, yes, we do have an atonement in the New Testament, and it comes by faith in Jesus Christ, that he took away your sins. You can't have faith that he took away your sins if you don't have faith that he took away somebody else's sins. See, people want grace for themselves, but they don't want grace for other people. And they're not willing to believe for someone. They're only willing to criticize someone. It's a bad deal. God is not blind. He remembers. So, would you rather be judged by Leviticus 5 and 17? Or would you rather be judged by James 4 and 17? To him, therefore, that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. When you know something's wrong, you know the scriptures are correct. But you willfully ignore them because you have your own selfish ambition. Or you twist them and wrench them because you have your own idols. Well, you can't get away with that. It always comes back to bite you, right? To him, therefore, that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Now, there's two things you got to know about this. Number one. What sin to you because of your knowledge is not necessarily sin to someone else because of their knowledge. So if you're looking on the outward appearance, remember God looks on the heart. He's the one that knows that. Now I know 
some very outward immoral things everybody knows is wrong. Now, they can convince themselves it's not because they want to do it, but down inside they know they're wrong. Put them on their deathbed, you'll find out. Okay, so we're talking about many things that people don't know are wrong. And if you judge them and condemn them, what you do is you separate them from grace by putting your condemnation upon them. And when you do that, you're guilty of their fall because everybody needs faith to survive and to grow and to bear fruit. Everybody. And if you take away that faith by your false condemnation and your judgment against them, you will be held guilty for that. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Now you know to do good in this regard. And James chapter 2, remember, if you judge according to law, you're going to be judged according to law. And if you're going to be justified by the law, you have to keep the whole law. If you just break it in one point, you are a lawbreaker. God will judge you. Be careful you don't fall under the law because you're putting someone else under the law. Because if you fall under the law, you're now guilty of breaking the whole law. In verse 8, James 2 and 8, he says, How be it, if you fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, do you really do that? Do you really strive to do that? To put your neighbor ahead of you? I love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. But if you have respect of persons, in other words, you're more important than they are, your, your desires are more important than they are, uh, impressing people with your knowledge and your ability and who you are and your importance and all these things is as respect of persons. But if you have respect of persons, you commit sin. Being convicted by the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble at one point, he has become guilty of all. Wow, that's, you're in big trouble if you do that, right? You judge somebody by the law, you judge by the law yourself. You're guilty of everything. Nothing that you've done is forgiven. And Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. People bring their whole family under judgment by doing that. You remember Jesus in Matthew 18? The guy that wouldn't forgive his brother? He ordered him to be sold. And his whole family, they were being sold into bondage. His whole family. He has become guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou dost not commit adultery, but thou killest, thou art become a transgressor of the law, and judged by the law, because you're judging somebody else by the law, right? So speak ye, and so do, as men that are judged by a law of liberty. Amen. For judgment is without mercy to him that has showed no mercy. Mercy glories against judgment. Yep. Choose to err on the side of mercy every time. And don't do it. Don't judge unless you're sure. And God has impressed you of his will and his desire. And not your own. Be careful. Be careful. Uh, I'd like to see you escape the judgment, wouldn't you? Okay, I tell you what, let's go to uh, Romans. And the uh, first thing I'd like to point out is Romans 7. And, um, well, I'm going to come, I'll come back to Romans 7. Let me see. I want to do something else here. I want to go to chapter 5 and verse 13 which says 
For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Sin's not imputed when you're not under the law and not accounting your righteousness as because of something you can do according to the law. When you're ignorant, in other words, there's no law, God said, first of all, He was going to take the law in the New Covenant and write it upon your mind and upon your heart. So when you're ignorant, there's no law. And what? Sin is not imputed. He didn't say it wasn't there. He said it was not imputed, which means it's not counted against you. Now, that's not true according to the law. It is counted against you, even when you're ignorant. It's counted against you. But He's saying here that it's not imputed when there's no law. In the New Testament, the law is not what's written upon the page. It's what writ- what's written in your heart. The catch-22 is, if you don't read what's written upon the page, you won't be written in your heart, and you won't bear fruit of what you put in there. So you should be growing in the knowledge of God and of grace, as Peter spoke. Okay? And also... Back in Romans 7, let me read that to you. Verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Howbeit, I had not known sin except through the law. For I had not known coveting except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, finding occasion, wrought in me through the commandment all matter of coveting. Wait a minute. Notice this. What made him a sinner? The law. Remember, Adam and Eve were in a dispensation of innocence. God gave them one law, and they broke it, and then they fell under judgment. And now we see that, what does he say? But sin, finding occasion, wrought in me through the commandment. In other words, when you know the commandment, you know God's will. All manner of coveting, for apart from law, sin is dead. Did you see that? Uh, actually, the is not in the original there. It's not doesn't have a numeric pattern in it because it's not just the law he's talking about. Okay? Apart from law, sin is dead. In other words, if you don't know it's wrong, then it's not imputed against you. And I was alive apart from the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived. Why? Because then you become a sinner. Because then you know to do good. The commandment came. Sin revived. And I died. And the commandment, which was unto life, this I found to be unto death. For sin, finding occasion through the commandment, beguiled me, and through it slew me. Okay, so you don't know what someone knows in their own heart. You only know what you know in your heart. You're held accountable to what you know in your heart. You're not to make them accountable to what is in your heart. They are accountable to what God has written in their heart and in their mind. That's what they're accountable to. And so you have to be careful not to judge out of turn or judge in the flesh. Who art thou, O man, that judges? When you judge others, you judge yourself. Okay? In chapter 4 and 15, I'll read it to you. For the law worketh wrath, but where? There is no law, neither is there transgression. There it is again. Where there is no law, you don't want to go back under the law. You don't want to go back under the laws of men. And you want to be judging by grace and being judged by grace. Where there is no law, neither is there transgression. For this cause, it is of faith that it may be according to grace. Uh Aha! So this is true for you. It's true for your neighbor. 
It's according to faith that it may be according to grace. You're justified by faith, not through the works of the law. You're justified by faith that it may be according to grace, to the end that the promise may be sure to all the seed, not to those only which are of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. He's speaking to Romans here. He wasn't a physical father to the Romans. He was a, a physical father to the Jews, but he is also a spiritual father to anyone who walks by faith. And if you walk by law, you don't have the covenant. You went back under a covenant that does not exist, and you went back under a covenant that wasn't made with you, you Gentiles. And um, he's the father of us all, the father of many nations, or Gentiles, have I made thee. Before him whom he believed, even God. Oh, praise God. So, be careful. You know how you judge other people? God will hold you accountable. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more in uh, Romans chapter 3 here. He said, being justified or accounted righteous, verse 24, accounted righteous, freely by His grace, that's His unmerited favor, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, by the way, which comes through faith, right? So you're justified by faith, and that gives you grace, right? Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forth to be a propitiation, meaning a covering, covering, through faith in His blood, so that you have a blood covering if you have faith in the sacrifice of Jesus, in that He took away your sins and that He gave you His life. You have a covering. What, how long does that covering stay there until you become willfully disobedient? Then there is no covering, as Hebrew 10.26 says. Contrary to popular opinion out there. To show his righteousness because of the passing over of the sins done aforetime in the forbearance of God. For the showing, I say, of his, his righteousness at this present season, that he might himself be just and the justifier of him that hath faith in Jesus. He didn't say he was a justifier of him that obeyed Jesus. He's the justifier of of him that hath faith in Jesus. When you have faith in Jesus, faith without works is dead. If you have faith in Jesus, he is going to work in you to willing to do of his good pleasure. Now, he will judge people according to every man according to his works. That's what he said. But he's judging faith when he judges your works. Because the faithless have no good works. The faithful do have good works because God gives them that gift through grace. You're saved, you are saved from sin. You are not saved to sin. That's the difference that is out there right now. Where then is the glorying? It's excluded. By what manner of law? Of works? Nay, but by a law of faith. So you got nothing to brag about. You're having faith in Him to save you. You're, you're not even strong enough to save yourself, and you couldn't do it by works. So therefore, you're at God's mercy. And so we need to act that way, right? We are at God's mercy. And He gives us His favor, His grace through our faith. And if we try to take away another man's faith, oh, that's a terrible thing we can do to ourselves and to our family. We reckon, therefore, that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of law. And again, that word there is not there. A, a, apart from the works of law. See, churches can make laws. Don't do this. Don't go dancing. Don't go, you know, don't this. Do, don't do that. They all have their do's and don'ts. And some people say, oh, I don't do this. No, I don't do that, you know. But... That doesn't make you saved. 
You're justified by your faith and not by your works. God's the God is God the God of the Jews only? Or is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yea, of the Gentiles also. If so be that God is one, and he justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Praise God. We're justified through faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do we then make law of none effect through faith? God forbid. Nay, we establish law. So you don't want to know how to fulfill the law without being under the law? It, you do it through faith. If you don't walk by faith, you will not fulfill the law. And you are not under the law. And you're not under the letter of the law. The letter was written to the letter people of God, which was the Jews. And the Spirit was written to the spiritual people of God, which are those who are circumcised in heart and not in flesh, right? What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, of course, he's our forefather according to our faith. If you walk by faith, he's your forefather. If you don't walk by faith, in the, in the good news, then he's not your forefather. It's that simple. That Abraham, our forefather, hath found according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. In other words, he could brag if he had done something great, you know. But he couldn't do anything great because all of our salvation by works is nothing but filthy rags before God. He might have whereof to glory, but not towards God. In other words, he might brag about what he did, but he can't brag about what God did, because God is going to save you by grace through your faith. And there, that way leaves you nothing to brag about whatsoever. For what says the Scriptures? And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. Do you believe God? Can it be proven that you believe God? Do you argue with the Scriptures? When people show you the Scriptures and you argue with them, that can't be, I don't believe it, because my famous preacher said this, or I, I, I would like to continue to be once saved, always saved, or, you know, whatever your, you know, your idol is. Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. It was reckoned. means it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Amen? Now, to him that worketh, the reward is not reckoned as of grace. Oh, so you're working steadily to please the law, right? To please men. To please the law of the old covenant, maybe. How foolish. Listen carefully. Now to him that worketh, the reward is not reckoned as of grace, but as of a debt. In other words, God would owe it to you if you did it, if you accomplished it. But it's going to be given freely by grace through your faith. But to him that worketh not, in other words, he's not trying to be justified by the works of any law, but he believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. He believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. What manifestly is this person? Ungodly. But he believes. He believes the good news. Because of this, he goes on to say, his faith is reckoned for righteousness. Now, if you judge somebody by outward appearance and by your knowledge and you drag them out from under grace because they become condemned and they lose faith and instead they get into works and self-effort, you're just a murderer. You need to encourage people in their faith to believe for something higher than their own ability, which is righteousness. Encourage them. Build up their faith. Remember, we've been charged with sharing the good news. 
The good news is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth it. The good news that your sins were nailed on that cross and his life was given to you. And verse 6 says, Even as David also pronounced blessing upon the man unto whom God reckoneth righteousness apart from works. A man is blessed when he believes God. He doesn't believe in what he has accomplished and what he has left to do. He believes in what God already did at the cross. He took away your sins. He nailed them to the cross. You are free. Not free to sin, because when you believe that your sin was nailed to that cross, guess what? It happens. You don't have it anymore. Reckon yourself to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God, Paul said in Romans 6. Reckon it done. And then he said, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. He's telling you how to not let sin reign in your mortal body. Because you reckon yourself to be dead unto sin. The devil's telling you all the time you're a sinner. He's telling you all the time that you've done this all your life. You you, you can't be free of it. But the Bible says you're free of it. Are you going to believe contrary to your sight? Or are you going to walk by sight and die? So, remember, other people have this right too. That's why you have to be very, very careful in judging anybody else. In fact, you can't do that. Only God can do that. He knows where they are. He knows what they're believing. He knows what they know. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Are you capable of judging someone else's faith? Are you capable of judging the knowledge that they have in their mind? No, you're not. Only God's able to do that. He is the one that looks on the heart. Judge nothing before the time. The Bible says, Even as David also pronounced blessing upon the man unto whom God reckoneth righteousness apart from works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Wow. Their iniquities are forgiven and their sins are covered. What do you need a covering for? It's a propitiation. Because of faith in the blood of Jesus. Is it a covering because there's no sin under there? Well, no. Why do you need a covering? It's a covering because there is sin under there. But you're covered because you're accounted righteous because of your faith. And so is everybody else. Try to encourage people to believe the gospel. It's the power of God to save Condemning people into believing they're sinners is not what saves people. They're saved because of faith in the good news, faith in the sacrifice of Jesus. What are you supposed to be preaching to them? The good news of the gospel. And who's running around judging? Those that are putting other people under the law. And they are the biggest of sinners just as the Lord's pointed out to us several times here. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not reckon sin. Hmm. Is he not reckoning sin because it's not there? No, it is there. But he's not reckoning it as there. Notice. Will not reckon sin. Is this blessing then pronounced? Upon the circumcision or upon the uncircumcision also. In other words, the Jews and the Gentiles also. For we say to Abraham, his faith was reckoned for righteousness. How then was it reckoned? Yeah, go back and read it. Was he in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. He wasn't circumcised yet. It was the sign of the covenant. But he wasn't circumcised yet when God said this about him. He, because of his faith in God, he was accounted righteous. Now, you can go up and say, hey, you're not circumcised. You're not saved. Well, you'd have been wrong because faith is accounted as righteousness. See? 
not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had while he was in uncircumcision, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be in uncircumcision. And by the way, what did Paul say circumcision was in the New Testament? Baptism. There are people out there that are walking by faith in Jesus and they haven't been baptized yet. Should they? Of course. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Yes, you should get baptized. It's the seal of your faith. Every obedience is a seal of your faith. When you walk by faith, you don't know a lot of things. But when God shows it to you, if you're walking by faith, He'll give you the desire and the ability to do it because you're justified before Him. He, you have His favor. That's grace, right? His favor. Oh, praise God. And so Paul got this revelation. He was a guy that was raised up under the law, and he judged according to the law. He stoned people to death, for goodness sake. <laughs> so he had to... He had learned some things about this, right? And I'll just read to you verse 15 of chapter 7. On down it says, For that which I do I know not. For not what I would, that do I practice. In other words, while he was trying to clean himself up, he discovered he wasn't able to do it. But what I hate, I'll read that again. For that which I do I know not, for not what I would or what I willed, that do I practice. In other words, I'm doing what I don't want to do. I'm doing what I hate. Still no help. You still don't have any help because it's faith that gives brings God's power on board. But if what I would not that I do, I consent unto the law that it is good. So you're saying, yes, what's right is right and wrong is wrong. And you're saying, I don't want to do this, therefore I know what's right and wrong. So now it's no more I that do it, but sin which dwelleth in me. See, since he didn't want to do it, but he was doing it, it's not him that's doing it. It's the sin that dwells in him. God begins to separate you from the guilt of the sin. He starts separating you from that sinner that lives in you. Because you don't want that. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present. He had a desire to please God. But to do that which is good is not. Why? Because of his very nature is corrupt and fallen. He's got to have somebody from the outside to reach in and change him because he can't pick himself up by his bootstraps. He can only be what he is. He's a fallen creature. He needs grace from God. For the good which I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do, that I practice. But if what I would not, that I do, it's no more I that do it, but the sin which dwelleth in me. I find then the law that to me who would do good, evil is present. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see a different law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity under the law of sin, which is in my members. Remember, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made you free from the law of sin and of death. Why? Because of your faith. Not because of your works, but because of your faith. Amen? Oh, that's awesome, isn't it? This is why it's called the good news, right? Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me out of the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He got faith. Here's a man struggling with the law, condemning him. But he got faith in the blood of Jesus. So then I of myself with the mind indeed serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. 
His flesh was conquering him. And so, this is where chapter 8 comes in. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, which comes through faith, made me free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. Praise be to God, saints. It's a good deal. It's good news. We give thanks unto God, right? Amen. Well, I hope you'll be careful about judging others because it'll get you out of a lot of judgment. In fact, there may be judgment on you right now. And if you will cease from judging and unforgiveness, you will be delivered. For more information and materials, go to www.americaslastdays.com.